All right, let's go to Christy in San Antonio. What's up, Christy? Hello. How we doing? <laughs> good morning. I'm good. Sorry, I have a little bit of a cold. <laughs> oh, no, it's all good. Um, how are you? I'm good. Really Excellent. good. Just enjoying the weather finally cooling down here in San Antonio. Very cool. I was in Houston yesterday, and it was much warmer than it is here in Nashville. Hopefully, you guys will get some more cool weather coming. I hope so. You know, 80s is better than 100, so <laughs> I, I can hang with that for a few months. <laughs> 80s, that's like the depth of winter for San Antonio. <laughs> hey, so, yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, so how can I help? What's up? All right, so I I am so grateful you were willing to take our call. Um, I love your show. And uh, so I have a wonderful, amazing husband, and we have three beautiful kids. And uh, we met in the Mormon church. We married in the Mormon church. We're very Mormon. <laughs> Up until... We are very... If I had a t-shirt company, I would make a shirt that just said, we are very Mormon. <laughs> yeah. Because, so, hey, here's what's funny. I'm not Mormon. And I know exactly yeah. what you mean. And it's <laughs> so great. So good. Yeah, when people see me, you know, when I make friends with people, they're like, yeah, you had a Mormon vibe. You're so, <laughs> you know, that's me, I guess. Very cool. Fortunately or unfortunately, you get to pick. There you um, go. So you are very, y'all, y'all, the gang is very Mormon. Yeah, we're in it. We both serve missions and yeah, we just, yeah, we are in it. So, all right, you're in about, it. <laughs> yeah, so when COVID hit, you know, we stopped going to church and my husband had some legit, questions. And so the past couple of years, he's been looking into our history and things like that. And recently he's kind of put a firm stop to that, meaning he's decided that the Mormon church is not, it's not legitimate and it's not true. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, you know, just strange, awful things that happened in our history, embarrassing things. Sure. And I am, t I totally understand where he's coming from. I just have a different perspective than he does. And uh, so I want to keep going, but I'm willing to work with him and compromise and go to the Mormon church every other week and go to another church every other week. Like I am willing to do that and teach our kids open-mindedly and teach them, you know, to think for themselves and kind of come to an understanding on their own of what their personal beliefs are. I think beliefs should, are very personal and it should be a personal journey. So I'm willing to do that, but we keep on hitting this wall of, you know, he just really has a hard time with us continuing to go. Okay. Um, there's just a lot of things that, you know, they, when one parent doesn't really believe, sometimes they say, well, let's pray for your parent, you know, little things like that. Um, and he just doesn't want to be painted as a bad figure. And to me, that's something that we have control over as parents and we get to decide, you know, what our, how our children view us. And we have to talk about things that they're, they're taught or that they hear, et cetera. And we get a voice. Uh, I think he feels a little differently. Sure. And so, you know, he's having a hard time respecting my desire to want to keep going um, when he's just had such a hard time with, um, you know, his side of things. Does, he have, does he have a personal experience that has emerged? Uh, because of it? Yeah. I mean, he served a mission and it was not positive for him. He was very down his whole mission. Okay. Um I don't think he's ever, I don't think he's ever drank the Kool-Aid. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, totally, totally. Like he's always looked at everyone and be like, this is, you know, this is kind of weird, but maybe I just need to try a little harder okay. kind of thing. Yep. I think he's always kind of viewed it that way. I could be wrong. What, what do you, <laughs> but so you've, you, you said he's got very valid questions, very valid um, yes. concerns, all those things. When you say you have a different perspective, I heard it said this way once. Um, I, I have a close friend who's a just a, an extraordinary theology professor and yeah. very much an atheist. And right. we sat by each other in, in church. And I asked him once, like, why do you still come? 
And he said something that was profound. He said, this is my ethnicity. He said, this is my culture. This is, when I walk into this building, I exhale. I right. I feel at home here. Even though I don't buy everything that's coming from the pulpit, I still believe in the positivity and I still believe in community and I still believe in stopping every week to remember. So he had had um, really dove, dove deep and found uh, a, a way to get to the, to continue the practices while also having different thoughts. Why do you feel it's important to continue to go? Because here's why, where this is important. If ultimately you and your husband ha- land on different cosmic beliefs, meaning there is a truck coming down the highway, and if we don't push our kids out of the way, they're going to get hit by this truck. Yeah. If, if our kids don't go to this particular building and are not baptized in this particular denomination in this particular way and they are going to spend eternity burning in hell or whatever the cosmic punishment is in the mormon church um then we have to address that and if the other person says this is all crazy none of this is real now you're going to have a problem if it's like my buddy if this is simply this is where i feel comfortable this is where i feel safe this is all i know and i'm not interested in blowing up everything that's a different conversation because that is we're going to practice. We're going to have, you see what I'm saying? We, we can, we can slowly expand that circle. That's different. So where are you in this conversation? So, you know, it's interesting. I think some Mormons probably do think if they, their children don't get baptized then, or they don't get married in the temple, then they're going to, you know, who knows? They're not, they're not going to make it. I don't know sure. eternally, but I do not feel that way, and I've never felt that way. Okay. So, so what is the what does the church like get you? True, and it's inspired. Okay. So, I mean, I just like I love the Book of Mormon. I think it's inspired, and okay. I think God can inspire men in lots of different areas. But this particular church just speaks to me, and it is my home. Absolutely, okay. I was raised in it, but uh, it's just the doctrines. Mm-hmm. Um, if you take away all the history and just have the doctrine, it makes a lot of sense. It's <laughs> that's what it's, it's like. <laughs> man, if you take away all those things that <laughs> yeah. that, uh, that one coach did, uh, man, those plays you drew up are great. Um, okay, so no, and there's messed up history, and I don't have the answers to that. Either. Oh, there's me- dude, there's I, messed I up history in every organization that's ever existed, right? Let's be honest, every organization. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, I, yeah. So here's the I, here's I the listener true. plot twist. Brandon is on the other line. Do you know this, Christy? Uh, yeah, I think he said that he wanted to join. So. Okay, so I want to make sure this isn't like a Jerry Springer, like where we like gotcha. No. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, gotcha. And yes, it's on the other line. So I'm no, gonna f- I know. Yeah. Uh, Jenna, can you, you bring them both in? Brandon, you there? I'm here, John. What's up, man? Just, I wish this was a Jerry Springer situation. <laughs> <a lot> more <laughs> interesting. He's so great. You are not the father, Brandon. Hey, so, um, <laughs> Christy has walked us through and you've probably been listening. Um, I'd love to hear your side of what's going on. Yeah. I mean, a lot of what she said is pretty valid, uh, in telling the story. I think like, you know, sometime during COVID, there was definitely a little uh, tension in our marriage about how we're teaching our kids because she would, you know, want to teach my children things. And I, for some reason, started to feel kind of uncomfortable. Like, it was just something about my children of like, they're going to believe anything I tell them. Mm-hmm. And that really caused a lot of like self reflection of just like, well, why do I believe what I believe? Right. Uh, and so, good, uh, hey, hey, hold on. Good, of, good parenting yeah, yeah. for both of you. Like, good parenting for, understand both of y'all seem to understand that hey these kids are impressionable and we need to be intentional about what we're passing along to them good for you that's incredible oh thanks man we're trying <laughs> all right so i interrupted yeah, but, you go ahead no you're fine but yeah um that just kind of caused a, a real questioning thing of like well you know do, do i really want to tell my kids this if i don't really you know, no, for sure. Cause it's, it's more of like, I'm a, I'm a good kid. I, I did whatever my parents told me, you know, I, I didn't really ever question anything before. Like, yeah, a lot of stuff was weird and that's fine. I, you know, I grew up in an area where there weren't a lot of people in my face. So like, I kind of knew that, you know, we're kind of weird in some ways and that's fine. But like, um, yeah, it just sort of caused this trickle effect of really questioning like, well, what do I believe? Why do I do it? And I just didn't want to give my kids like 
tell them all these things and give them all this baggage if it wasn't right. Right. So mm-hmm. that's what caused me to dig into it. And, uh, it, it's been, I'd say the biggest aspect of difficult, um, you know, through that thing is just, I feel differently now. And then that wasn't what I signed up for and wanted. Um, that wasn't the answer I wanted. Like this is a, a very, uh, inconvenient, annoying thing that is uh, taxing on a variety of levels. Um, but you know, at the core of like what we're saying, we're trying to do what's best for our kids. And I think, I think for me, the hardest aspect is I really want to respect, you know, like what my wife's talking about of like meet 50, 50 or respect what she's saying. But like, I feel like I'm just disrespecting her in that process of like, well, yeah, she's telling you all this, but this isn't how it is because of this. And that's, that's where I feel like I'm making her out to be some kind of villain while at the same time, kind of how I was taught, how I was raised in this church of we have, this is what you think. This is your salvation. It's completely contradictory, right? Like they're going to be told that, you know, the exact opposite of what I think. And so that's where I just feel a lot of times just like stuck. Mm. of like, well, how do we navigate this? How can I respect her and her beliefs? Because I want to do so while also not giving them things that they don't necessarily need to go down just for uh, difficult reasons, if that makes sense. Absolutely. All right. Um, since both of you are on the phone, this is this is rare for me. I love this because I can actually have both of you on here. Um, I want to throw two grenades into the middle of the couch y'all are sitting on and let me know if I'm off, okay? Here's grenade number one. Brandon, I don't think you've believed for a long, long time. True or false? Mm, It was like, it was like I was like forcing myself to. So, I mean, there's definitely some validity into what you're saying, but like, I never questioned it. Like, I just kept thinking why I don't feel this way is because I'm not following things correctly. So you're not, you're not good enough. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, very long time. And the reason I didn't have like a strong confirmation of that is because I just guess I wasn't trying enough. Okay. But no, that's, that's a fair grenade, but like, it's not, yeah, it's not exactly like that to put in a, but to an extent. Sure. So when people lose their faith or when they deconstruct it, or they begin to pull apart what they've been told their whole lives, or like you mentioned, I just never questioned it. I kind of rolled my eyes at it. I did what was the, I did the next thing in front of me. Um, and by the way, this happens with, um, some people find themselves two kids into a marriage at seven years old and they're like, what am I doing? I, I just did the next thing in front of me. Some people do find that professionally and they find themselves an associate vice president at a company they don't care at all about in a job that they hate. Like, so faith is, is an integral part of us. Right. And by the way, I, I, believe that David Foster Wallace, there's no such thing as an atheist. You worship something, whether it's science or CrossFit or some sort of deity, you, you worship, we all, everybody worships something, your diet, whatever it is. So it can often feel, um, deceptive. Like one of y'all, like you lied to me or you're not who I thought I married. Or if you really go back and say, um, you know, I I don't think I ever really bought into this. I just did it because I was a good compliant kid, but I don't ever believe in fill in the blank. It's easy for Christy to then go, well, who did I attach my wagon to? Right? Like I signed up for something that you weren't right. So there can be this, this picture of dishonesty. So before we go further, I want to make sure both of y'all are on the same page it doesn't sound like there's anybody tricked anybody or bait and switched anybody. Are we both on all, everybody on the same page on that one? Yeah. Yeah. This is a, it's yeah. a legitimate, I'm growing, right? Which is a, yeah. which is a challenge that all marriages face. Um, all right. So here's the, here's the second grenade. Brandon, I would be willing to bet. And again, I love it when I'm wrong. So tell me I'm wrong. That all this focus on your kids is an easy place to put marital tension. Like, we've got to do this for the kids. We've got to fix this for the kids. We've got to get the right answers for the kids. We've got to be consistent for the kids. Let's us avoid looking across the table at the woman or man that we love and say, like, I'm losing respect for you. I can't imagine how you could believe this. You're not as smart as I thought you were like really deep seated, challenging questions. Am I right? Or am I off? Mm. So 
more or less like we're putting children first and marriage second. And because of that, I'm, I'm thinking less of my wife. Is, it, is that the question? No, I'm um, spending a lot of energy worrying about the kids allows you to avoid the person sitting in front of you. I, I mean, I think there's a little bit of that, like when you're talking about like, how can you think that? But like, I, I really think I'd say the arguments turned into a little bit of us more than the kids in some ways. So I, Kristen, what do you think? Or Christy, what do you think? <laughs> I want to say ding, 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 ding. <laughs> yes. Okay. I think I, I do. I think that, and honestly, I think at the core of why we're stuck, because I do feel like I, it doesn't matter what I decide we're stuck because Brendan has lost respect for me. Because I'm reading the same material as him and I'm coming up with different answers. Mm -hmm. And he thinks my answers mean that I am brainwashed. Um, And so if I go all the way out, I can't, I'm lying to my children because I don't, I don't believe that, I don't believe the church's fault. Um, If I stay partially in and allow Brandon, Brandon to be himself and um, teach his things as well as me, and we kind of go forward together with different beliefs, but we show respect. I feel like I'm not going to get the same respect that I can give him. Mm-hmm. What do you think about so that, Brandon? I, I, I didn't. What was there a question? I'm sorry. I didn't yes. Hear I, over, I, uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, no, I, I, I understand that. Um, yeah, I, I think those those feelings, and and that's part of uh, what we're struggling with is just coming up with a good answer for that. And it sounds like a lot of that comes on me. Okay, so a very common path, um, and it's a it's kind of a buzzword right now, deconstruction. My friend Justin McRoberts is a um, doing some extraordinary coaching work with folks who are quote unquote deconstructing their faith, whatever that looks like. He's awesome. He's a great thinker along those lines. Um. <laughs> And if you go back to scripture, actually, and I don't want to be preachy, but I think Jesus was the first one that that talks about deconstruction. You've heard it was said this way, but I tell you this, right? So you thought it was this way. I'm telling you it looks like this, right? And that's all throughout scripture. Um, part of the deconstruction process is becoming untethered and th- to what you know, to your routines, to the cosmos, and then – You have this season of shame. What an idiot I was. And then there's a season of anger. Like I'm pissed off at my parents, at the church. And then it's easy to, when we feel ashamed and we feel angry, one of the great soothing band-aids over shame and anger is to blame somebody, to go after them. And we start going to war with our heritage, with the people who did evil things, which every group on planet Earth has evil people in their past. We start getting down that road. And then after we feel some superiority of blame, we feel intellectually superior. I I feel this way because I'm smarter than you. You're dumb. And that's where relationships get in a mess. When somebody starts looking down at the word, the, the word Christie said, I feel disrespected um, or I feel like he's losing, res- you're losing respect in her. That's where I want to spend most of your focus. Here's the deal with your kids. One of the greatest gifts you can give your kids is to acknowledge openly and honestly, here's the adventure that I'm on. Um, I think, uh, four of the greatest words in the English language for a parent to a child is the words, I changed my mind. I used to believe this and now I believe this. And in a year or two, I may believe something a little bit different and here's where I'm headed and here's why I'm headed that way. So this, the obsession or the panic about having the right answer to give our kids, or we're going to screw them up. Make no mistake. You're going to give them baggage, dude. What you want to do is to be able to teach them, model for them, when you have baggage, regardless of how it got there, whether it's a coach or a teacher or a girlfriend that dumps you or some mean boy or somebody who abuses you or whatever, life will give you bricks in your backpack. You'll get baggage. This is what it looks like to be in relationship with somebody and both of y'all figure that out. So in my house, 
My wife and I both identify as Christian. We both go to the same church. We have radically different beliefs on certain topics, certain issues. Like she, she, my wife will roll her eyes when I try to explain something. And um, I'm not, I don't, I can't roll my eyes that well, but I'll be like, I just think you're missing the boat on this. And so we have this, a similar value structure, but we have very different beliefs in our house. And my friends who identify in the same, who go to the same church as me, we have very different beliefs. We have very different beliefs on how I've got friends that cannot believe I work where I work. Uh, I've got one friend and I love her to death. And she's like, every time I listen to your podcast, I just want to yell at you because you're so wrong on all these things, right? So that's just like, that to me, I don't, I, there's not a disrespect there. It would be disrespectful if they weren't honest with me. Um, so here's my concern, Brandon, that you are taking a moral superior high ground. And that's a dangerous place to be. Do you feel yourself going there? And I only say that because I've been there too. Like I look at other people like you're dumb for not believing X, Y, and Z, right? Uh, yeah, sure. Is there a way to model for your kids? Um, this is what changing beliefs look like. I was taught this as a kid, as I've gotten older. Um, I don't believe this anymore. Here are some really great things that I took from this though. I do think a weekly practice is good. I do think community is good. I do think singing is good. Is there a way to find the good or is it just scorched earth for you? Yeah, I mean, I think there is a way to to find the good in it. I mean, because more than anything, it, it, it matters to, to Christy. So I, you know, want to support her in that and, and you know, not have her disabandon something just because I, I no longer think that way. I think, like, my struggle is... I just reflect back on my own life and why I think the way I do and the teachings that are taught. And it's like, man, I just feel there's a lot of harm. And so that it, I, I gotta, I gotta find a way to know that, you know, the parental view is going to have more of a sway than what teachers well, and I, leaders are teaching them. Right. But well, in, in, in Christie, this is where it's really important. He said an important word. I think this is harming our kids. And Belief in a higher power, belief in love, belief in salvation, belief in value and worth. Um, there's no harm there. Belief, it, certain things being communicated um, that harm your kids. That's where you, Christy, have to sit down and say, I think our kids are being hurt. Or y'all are going to yeah. have to find some sort of common value there or some sort of common language there. Um, here's what I really want you to spend your energy moving forward less on worrying about the kids. They are going to pick up the marital tension. They're going to pick up Brandon when y'all are getting ready for church, the huffing and puffing and the eye rolling and the, <sighs> they're going to pick up way more on that than they are some Sunday school teacher telling them some weird thing about some weird, whatever. They're going to pick way more up Christy sitting there in church by herself or not going and her huffing and puffing around the house. They're going to, you see what I'm saying? They're going to absorb that tension much more than being open about here's where we're going. Here's why we're doing this. I used to believe this. I was taught this. I don't really agree with this. I believe this. And they're going to tell you this today. Um, I don't, I don't believe that. I believe this. And at some point y'all have a conversation about here's where we're going to end up. Um, there is no smooth, simple way forward. The only path y'all have forward is to agree that we're going to do this together. And that if anybody feels morally superior, if anybody feels I've got to call a timeout, that you feel empowered to do that. And it's real easy to suddenly not be able to do that anymore. Is that fair? Yeah. yeah so when you say a timeout, meaning like when some, when I, you know, when the respect isn't fully there, we just call a timeout on the discussion and, circle back. Well, later. it's, it's you, Christy, like... being able to say, I feel like you think I'm stupid right now. Yeah. Or Brandon, you're back on your high horse again. I know. I know that they're going to say this and I disagree. Um, and Brandon, you giving her permission, right? She gets to decide when she's disrespected and, and vice versa. You get to decide, Hey, this, this is going to harm our kids. I'm telling you, I've experienced harm from these messages or this particular message. It scares me to put our kids back in that. And Christy, you got to hear that. Okay. Right. And merging cultures is hard. 
changing minds is hard. Changing beliefs is hard. It works best when we can do this together. And what I don't want to see you is y'all yeah. lose your marriage over this. Are you both in? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Christy's like, oh, yeah. And Brandon's like, I mean, <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I mean, <laughs> I'm messing with you, dude. I'm messing with you. Um, Brandon, let me ask you one more quick question. Are you out completely of all faith? Are you done with it? No. No faith, no. It's, uh, I mean, there's obviously like multi levels of deconstructing what's going on. Cause sure. Once you feel you've kind of been led astray, it's like, well, now do I want to explore my faith in Jesus, my faith in Christianity, my faith in the Bible? And like, I'm trying to like just pull the brakes on that really hard because that stuff does matter to me mm -hmm. and it's been forming for me and important. And I want my children to have that. How are you? So, no, how I'm are not, you? How are you doing your? Do you have people walking alongside you in this? Or are you watching a lot of YouTube? That's, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, not a YouTube guy. Uh, I'm definitely like the only person I know who doesn't watch YouTube on a regular basis. Good for you. Um, well, thank you, I guess. Um, a lot of it comes from like the initial aspects of it. There's like, for example, this has obviously probably been a pretty common issue with numerous faiths is people questioning stuff and whatever. Um, and so I tried to stay pretty basic on far, as far as from like initial research on it, uh, like the, the church itself has a link on their website of troubling things about their past. And so in this whole process, like I, I know like in the back of uh, everyone's mind, mine included, it's like, is this always what I wanted? Like, have I always doubted? But like, I've really like in this process tried really hard to stay where I am because, you know, trust me, I'd rather be doing something else than having this conversation like a lot of men. But um, I, as I, as I go through and like, look at stuff, like I was looking like through ch sources through the church and then I'd read, well, I didn't, that I was never taught that, and then I'd like click on all the source material, which would just link through, you know, deep. Uh, how would I call it? There's like archives of all kinds of information of posts, and, and sure. so I would read like the whole thing, and I'd just finding more stuff, and then just being like, "Am I in a Netflix documentary? Like, what is going on?" <laughs> okay, so and so, so then I, I'd read I'd read all these apologist books. Like I, I read one book. I, I tried. It was hundreds of pages, and I got like 13 hours through the audio book, and it just like kept opening up more and more stuff. It was like, it really felt like I was watching like that Netflix documentary. It's sure. like, wait, am I in this? And yeah. so that's, that's really like how, how this is kind of formed and started. And, and like, yeah, now there's every now and then there's other things I come across or things that pop up that I, I'm more open to reading where in the past I was taught, Oh, this person's view. I've like heard the name and, and they're the devil or whatever. Right? Okay. Here's and your, so, here's your, here's your, here's your homework. Okay. Yeah. Um, this weekend, yesterday, I flew to Texas for a funeral, did a day, day trip. And, um, one of my family members passed away. It was a hard day. And the, the small little chapel was packed. And I heard stories about my family that I didn't know. And I <laughs> saw family members I haven't seen in a long time. And I was like, whoa. And I learned things and heard things and saw things. And if I had read that in a book, it would have been a very, it would have been very easy to depersonalize it, to see it in black and white. And hearing these stories in the context of everybody getting together in communion and community and love and grief and sadness, and we laughed like crazy. Um, and we shared a meal together. It provided a new context. So here's your here's your homework. Um, I want you to stop going down the, the the information rabbit holes. That stuff's really important. But I want you to spend some time talking with people who have walked away from their faith, talking people in the Christian faith or in the Mormon faith. What I don't care who. Talk to wise people. Um, and stop trying to absorb all of this by yourself with data. Um, and it, we have completely, in my opinion, ruined faith with info. We've just gone down a rabbit hole of data and info and this and that. And we've, we've completely lost the communal aspect to this, the wisdom nature of this, of the conversation across all different faiths. So I want you to put down the reading for a bit. Put down the podcast for a bit, put down the documentaries for a bit, and I want you to spend a season talking to people, listening, 
saying, Hey, I'm about, I think I've lost everything. And I think I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm hurting my wife. I feel like I'm hurting my kids. I don't want to, I want to love them, but I can't keep doing this anymore. And spend some season in, in, in wise counsel. And let's start there. And Christy and Brandon, both of you, the A, thanks for calling and being open. I know this is very, very hard. And by the way, this is the United States right now. Homes are dividing over. Do we go to church? I'm not going to that church anymore. This church I don't believe in anymore. I don't believe in any of it anymore. I'm at the church of vegan whatever or the church of CrossFit or the church of Starbucks or whatever. Like We're seeing it just shift in, in our country. And I want people to circle back to the core relationship first. Who are we? Who do we believe? What do we believe? Why do we believe it? What practices back up that belief? How do we live those practices out throughout the week? What are we going to pass along to our kids? All of those things are critical and important. But let's start with a central core mission. We're going to keep our marriage strong. And I promise to um, honor you. You promise to honor me. I'm going to do the best I can to meet your needs. And I'm going to do the best I can. Or I want you to do the best you can to meet my needs. And I won't keep secrets. I'm going to tell the truth. And I'm not going to think I'm better than you or morally or, or intellectually superior to you. And also when I say, hey, this scares me or this hurts, I need you to listen to me. We're going to start there. And then we're going to surround ourselves with wise counsel. There are 5, 10, 15, 20 years ahead of us on this deconstruction journey. Let's go that route. Let's go that route. And my promise is over time, the conversation will shift from a matter of doctrine and a matter of this and that to a matter of peace and connectivity and all of a sudden the the whole conversation about faith opens up in a way that is so much bigger than any of us could have ever imagined thank you all for being brave and having this conversation grateful for you 